The Six Nations 2022 are over. Congratulations to France on their deserving Grand Slam victory and Italy for their victory against Wales. And I think it's fair to say that all the teams involved provided us with some excellent and really passionate, entertaining rugby throughout the entire tournament. So it stands to reason then that Echo Software's latest rugby iteration might find its way into your wish list. And this iteration comes with a number of improvements worthy of note. Rugby 22 released at the end of January 2022, and it has received a number of patches since that time. Sadly though, these patches have not really managed to retain the initial positive feedback that the game was receiving. Possibly those rugby union staffed individuals were just happy to have something to play. So, is it actually any better, or have the issues simply been exposed? To be fair, there are a decent number of improvements with Rugby 22. The new tutorial system is pretty helpful and somewhat satisfying. I like the kicking system, and overall the breakdowns seem to be faster and more intense, if still feeling a little bit clunky for new players like me, with the default button layout introducing numerous accidental actions into your gameplay, because different actions actually use exactly the same button. Like the two iterations before Rugby 22, it does contain some licensed teams and players, and on the most part, the character faces are accurate. But the majority of teams are not licensed, and sadly, it seems that they have lost the Premiership license as well. Now, this wouldn't necessarily be a huge issue if the game included a comprehensive player editor. A ridiculous oversight, in my opinion, which renders the current price tag as questionable. Graphically, there are some improvements over Rugby 20, but nothing to really wow you. And the animations are again improved, but still have numerous gaps, especially when tackling, with players pirouetting effortlessly through multiple tackles quite often. The fatigue system is an interesting thing, and it can have game-changing impacts in latter stages of games, but I don't think it's quite polished to a point where it works. The commentary is much the same as it was in previous iterations, and regardless of how you feel about the commentary overall, I personally am convinced it's better to have it than to have nothing at all. Here's the rock being created. Davies caught him by the throat that time. That should be a card. The game's trying to cut that kind of stuff out. That is so dangerous. And it serves no purpose either. New to the franchise comes weighted passing, a system requiring you to hold down the chosen pass button for a determined amount of time in order to change the strength and distance of your pass. And other than being a little bit floaty still, it's a good addition to the game, making passing more involved and more enjoyable. Except for one significant issue, on PC at least, the passing is really laggy. What appears to be happening here is that the animation for passing starts the second you release the button, instead of starting the moment that you depress the button and passing the second that you release it. For me, this is the one significant issue in Rugby 22. If they could change just this one game mechanic, it would enhance the overall gameplay for me considerably. The career is unchanged and, in my humble opinion, it still does not actually constitute as a career in its current format. But running, twisting and turning, all controlled on the right thumbstick, can generate some really rewarding moments. But, unfortunately, you're more likely to identify moments where animation glitches through each other, tackles fail to land and your AI teammates basically fail to position themselves defensively or make a tackle without your explicit involvement. Rugby 22 does lack the fluidity of older rugby games like Jonah Lomu, and it doesn't yet have that overall rewarding gameplay experience we had with the EA franchise. But Rugby 22 is a significant step forward in some areas, and progress, however small, is always appreciated and welcome. I would say that if they include proper editing tools, concentrate on the core issues like fixing the passing lag and improving on the character animations and ball physics, then Rugby 24 really could be a defining moment in rugby gameplay. We certainly seem to be heading in that general direction. At the time of making this review, the price on Steam is just £25, and for me, that feels a far more befitting price for this title. Certainly not the worst rugby game I've ever played, but not quite hitting the highs to make it the best one either. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button. Goodbye for now.